All right, let's take a look at uh, the Big East and the uh, the uh, Big Ten East and the Big Ten West. See what's going on after Ohio State's very impressive win over Wisconsin over the weekend. A game it was an interesting game. I uh, picked it up uh, about midway in the second quarter, and Ohio State was up by ten and I uh, by three at that time, and I was just hoping they could get a, a score in the, uh, the rest of the half and get it into. I knew the the weather was horrible. And so I was just hoping they could make it 10 to nothing at halftime, which they did. And then they went out and blew the game out in the second half. So congratulations to, uh, to them. So here you go. It's the Big Ten East standings right now. Penn State and Ohio State tied 5-0, 8-0 overall. Michigan uh, with their win uh, over Notre Dame, but doesn't help them in the conference. They're 3-2. Indiana also at 3-2. Michigan State falls, falls to 2-3. And, and Maryland 1-4 uh, and, and Rutgers 0-5. And, and of course, uh, We'll talk about Ohio State's schedule, but it's pretty easy the next week. I don't know if they'll have more trouble with the bye or with Rutgers, but we'll find out about that in the next uh, couple of uh, couple of weeks. 216-575-0403 is the number. Now let's take a look at the West, Minnesota. Look at those guys, 5-0, 6-0 overall. And uh, they, of course, don't have to, to play the big boys, but they will have to play some people to get where they need to get. And that would be into the championship game of the Big Ten at Lucas Oil Stadium in, uh, in Indianapolis. Iowa is next at 3-2. Wisconsin falls to 3-2 and two after that, uh, well, the loss to uh, Illinois and then, of course, Ohio State. Uh, Illinois at 2-3 and three now under Lovey Smith. Nebraska 2-3 and three, and Purdue 1-4. And, and Northwestern, who, uh, play, who had uh, seemingly had a turnaround over the last couple of years, now falter to 0-5, and, and they are 1-6 and six in the uh, overall standing. So that's the way it looks. And and um, we'll get your thoughts on that. Ohio, uh, the impressive thing about Ohio State, and well, everything is impressive. I, I've seen, over the years, you've seen good Ohio State offenses, good Ohio State defenses, but I'm not sure you saw, you've seen in the last, I'm just gonna throw a number out, how about 25 years. I don't think it's been 25 years since Ohio State has had an equally dominant defense and an equally, do, an equally dominant offense, which is what they have right now. And uh, when you consider that Ohio State could have two, maybe three people who will be in the top 10 in the voting in the Heisman Trophy uh, Award, um, it's very possible. I, I'm, I'm just saying that because it sounds right, but I'm sure there's never been three players from one team in the top 10 in the Heisman voters, but it, uh, Chase Young could be one. And of course, uh, Fields and, uh, and, uh, the, the and the running back, uh, uh, J.J. Yeah, Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins, of course, uh, who's really come on strong in the last couple of weeks. So uh, could be all three getting in the top 10, which would negate the vote for one of the favorites, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, Doug had a, a column today, or a, an article today, about where he thought people uh, around the country were going to go in the bowl situations. And uh, when you think about it, uh, it's very possible if you've got an interesting setup uh, with the LSU and, and Ohio State, that everybody with the eyes on the quarterback. So we'll uh, we'll wait until Joe Burrow, of course, uh, down with uh, with LSU and uh, uh, Justin Fields with Ohio State. A lot of interesting matchups potentially coming up, and uh, Ohio State doesn't want to get sidetracked here, but we'll talk about that a little bit later too.